Hey guys, we are going to do some more practice with solving one-step equations. So let's start with this first one. X minus 9 equals negative 4 and 2 tenths. So I am going to keep myself organized by drawing my line down the middle here so I can keep my two sides balanced. And my job here is to isolate my variable so that I can end up with X equals something. So to do that, I'm going to have to get rid of this negative 9 or this minus 9, and we're going to use the inverse operation to do that. So since right now it's subtracting 9, the opposite of that is adding 9. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Remember, you want to keep it balanced. Over here, minus 9 plus 9, that basically cancels out to a 0. So I get x on that side. And on the other side, I have to think about my integer rules. So I have a negative 4.2 plus a positive 9. So different signs subtract. I'm going to do 9 minus 4.2. Don't forget to line up your decimals. And we're going to need to do some borrowing. I can't do 0 minus 2, so borrow here. 10 minus 2 gives me 8. Bring my decimal down. 8 minus 4 gives me 4. Keep the sign of the larger number, so the larger one was my positive 9. So my answer is x equals positive 4 and 8 tenths. Okay, then we go to the next one. m plus 2 and 3 fourths equals negative 1 half. So again, keep yourself organized. Break it apart so that you can see your two sides and keep them balanced. And again, I want to isolate my m, so I need to get rid of that plus 2 and 3 fourths. The opposite of adding 2 and 3 fourths is subtracting it, so I'm going to subtract 2 and 3 fourths from this side, subtract 2 and 3 fourths from this side, remember, keep it balanced. Over here, adding 2 and 3 fourths and then subtracting 2 and 3 fourths, remember that basically cancels out and gives you a 0, so I get m on that side, and I need to uh, solve the other side. So it's a negative 1 half minus 2 and 3 fourths. Um, this is a keep, change, change situation. So really I have a negative plus a negative. So I'm going to same signs, add and keep. So I'm going to do that work down here. 2 and 3 fourths plus 1 half. Okay. I want to give them common denominators, so really negative 2 and 3 fourths plus negative 2 fourths. Um, my whole number plus my whole number, I still have negative 2. My 3 fourths plus my 2 fourths gives me 5 fourths, and I need to simplify that. So 5 fourths is really 1 and 1 fourth, so my 2 plus that extra 1 and 1 fourth gives me a 3 and 1 fourth, and it is negative. So m equals negative 3 and 1 fourth. All right, I want you to go ahead and do these next two on your sheet. And when you are all done, come back and I will walk through them as well. Okay, let's go ahead and go through these problems. So I'm going to keep this first one um, organized. So put my line down and... I can see that it's really a minus a negative. So since it's subtracting a negative, I'm going to keep change change. I think that will just make this one easier. So keep my a, change my subtraction to addition, change my negative to a positive. So really what this is saying is to add positive 7 24ths. And since I'm doing the opposite of that, the inverse, I'm going to subtract 7 24ths from both sides. Okay, on the left, I'm just getting a left over because the others cancel out. And on the right, I have 1 third minus 7 24ths. So I need to give them common denominators. So I'm going to do that really quick right here. Um, I can change 3 into 24 by multiplying by 8. So I'm going to do the same to the top. So this is really 8 24ths minus 7 24ths. 8 24ths minus 7 24ths. 8 minus 7 gives me 1. My denominator stays the same. So a equals 1 24th. 
for the second problem you are doing, um, again, keep it organized, cut it down the middle. I'm going to isolate my H. So right now it's adding a negative. I want to subtract a negative or add a positive. Remember, minus negative is the same thing as adding a positive. So that is what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to add 8 ninths. Add 8 ninths over here. Okay, on the left, I just get H because adding a positive 8 ninths and a negative 8 ninths, those cancel out. And on the other side, I have a negative plus a positive. So different signs subtract. I have 17 eighteenths minus, hmm, I want to go ahead and make these common denominators. So this is really 16 eighteenths. So minus 16 eighteenths. 17 minus 16 is 1. My denominator stays the same. So I get 1 eighteenth, um, but it was different signs subtract. Keep the side of the larger number. Our larger number was this negative 17 eighteenths, so I really have negative 1 eighteenth as my answer. Okay, I want you to go ahead and pause the video here. Do the next four on your paper, and then I actually am going to have you check the answer key. I'm not going to walk through those for you. And when I go to the next one, I'm actually going to start on the top of the back of your paper and do the next couple with you as well. Okay, so we are now starting on the top of the back of your paper with these multiplication and division problems. So I have x over 3 equals negative 7 ninths. So keep yourself organized just like before. Let's split it in half. My goal is to isolate that x. So right now it's dividing it by a 3. So I'm going to do the opposite and multiply by 3. Since it's set up like a fraction, sometimes it's helpful to multiply it here like a fraction, like 3 over 1. And you can kind of cancel those out, especially since this side is also set up like a fraction. So I find that to be a little bit easier. Then right here, you can kind of see how it cross simplifies. The 3 and the 3 simplify down to a 1. So really this is just 1x, which is x. On the other side, though, we can see... 3 and 9 have something in common, so I'm going to simplify that down. That just makes my multiplication a little bit easier. So 7 times 1 is 7. 3 times 1 is 3. It was a negative times a positive, so a negative. And then we want to simplify that 7 thirds. So 3 comes out of 7 two times with 1 left over. So I'm getting 2 and 1 third. It was a negative 7 thirds, so negative 2 and 1 thirds is equal to x. Okay, if we go to the one over to the right, it's the same exact idea. Negative x divided by 8 is equal to negative 5 twelfths. So let's split it in half. It's dividing by a negative 8 here. I would go ahead and attach that negative sign on there so that you can go ahead and simplify it out. So this is a negative 8 that I'm going to now multiply by. Negative 8 over 1. Negative 8 over 1. On the left, remember these are canceling out. The negative 8 and negative 8 are just becoming 1. So that is how I'm getting x on the left. On the right, I would try cross simplifying. So 8 and 12 are both divisible by 4. 8 divided by 4 leaves me 2. 12 divided by 4 leaves me 3. And now when I multiply, I'm getting 5 times 2 is 10. I'm just going to write it down over here. So 10. 3 times 1 is 3. It was a negative times a negative, so that's a positive 10 thirds. And then I would go ahead and simplify that. So 3 comes out of 10 3 times with 1 left over. 3 and 1 third is what is equal to x. I want you to go ahead and pause it and do this next one really quickly on your own. And then come back to me and I will solve it with you. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and solved this last one. Um, x over 5 equals negative 4 eighths. So let's start by keeping ourselves organized here. I can see it's dividing by a positive 5, so I'm going to multiply by positive 5 over 1, multiply by 5 over 1. 
I can cross simplify right here. My five and my five can both turn into ones. On the other side, five and eight I can't simplify, four and one I can't simplify, so I'm just gonna have to multiply those. So four times five is 20, eight times one is eight. It was a negative times a positive, so it should be negative 20 eighths. On the left, I get x left over. On the right, I'm gonna have to simplify that a little bit more, I can't leave it improper, so eight comes out of 22 times with four left over. So two and four eighths, it was a negative two and four eighths, which we can simplify a little bit more. Four eighths is just one half, so negative two and one half would be our final answer for that third one. Okay, I do wanna go ahead and do this next one with you as well. So it's set up a little bit differently. This time I have 1.5s equals negative 300. Remember when a coefficient is right next to a variable, that means that it's multiplication. So right now it's 1.5 times s. So I am going to need to set this up, get myself organized real quick. And it is multiplying by 1.5, so I'm going to divide by 1.5, divide by 1.5, okay? Over here, on the left, remember 1.5 over 1.5, that's just one if you simplify it, so that's how I get my s. And on the other side, I actually just need to do that um, division. So top dog in the house, remember, 300 is gonna go inside. The 1.5 goes outside. Remember, we wanna slide, baby slide. Move that decimal over. And our whole number, remember your decimal's at the end, so when we slide it over, we have to add that placeholder zero there. And then don't forget to raise your roof, whoop, whoop. There it is. And now I can divide. I'm really dividing 3,000 by 15 now. So 15 goes into three zero times, but goes into 30 twice, which is 30. Bring down my zero. 15 goes into zero, zero times. Bring down my next zero. 15 goes into zero, again, zero times. So my answer here is 200. It was a negative 300 divided by a positive 1.5, so I should be getting a negative answer. So S equals negative 200. I'm gonna have you go ahead and do the rest of the page on your own, and then check the answer key to see how you did.